Today we're going to be showcasing the absolute best of game emulation on the base M4 MacBook Air with 16GB of RAM and only 8 GPU cores. And we'll be testing out a whole host of retro games as well as more current titles including older systems like the NES as well as newer consoles like the Wii U, Switch and even PlayStation 4. And these games are being emulated on the cheapest base M4 Mac of this generation on a passively called fanless MacBook Air. And you should know that if you have purchased a future iMac, Mac Mini or MacBook Air with the same chip then these games will pretty much perform exactly the same way and if you've got an M4 Pro or Max then you'll get even better performance. And as always for legal reasons I'm not able to show you where to download these games from but you can take a look at my Mac game emulation playlist which contains video tutorials for all of the systems being showcased today. And the sponsor of today's video is Manta Sleep and I'm wearing the Manta Silk Sleep Mask, definitely the most comfortable mask that I've ever worn. The 100% pure silk material reduces friction on the face and is very gentle on the skin. And easily the best thing about this mask is the fact that it has high quality 30 mommy silk eye cups which glide across the skin with zero friction. And these amazing cups can be removed and reattached to be customized for your own unique face. And the Manta Sleep Silk Mask will taper at your temples so they can sleep just as comfortably on your side. Their perfectly contoured shape means that you can get luxurious comfort and absolute blackout in any sleep position. And they don't just sell sleep masks. Check out the super comfy Manta Travel Pillow which inflates in just two blows. And if you're looking to block out noise, the Manta White Noise Machine has you covered. So make sure to click the link at the top of the description to go to the Manta Sleep website where you can find a huge range of other sleep masks which you can buy. Make sure to use my coupon code Andrew for 10% off your car order. So big thanks to Manta Sleep for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the main content. So first up is the emulator front end that you should probably install first, which is called OpenMU. And what makes it so great is the fact that it's very intuitive to use on the macOS interface. You can just drag and drop games like this is Final Fantasy 1 on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. It grabs all of the artwork and metadata for you and just double click and then it'll start to open. And if you want to full screen it, just go ahead and press the green button to maximize the window. And if you want to get a proper feel for this game you can go ahead and apply shader and it'll kind of look like you're playing this game back in the day on a CRT screen and it's basically the same deal with SNES games as well so just drag and drop your ROM and it'll appear under the correct section under Super Nintendo. And one thing you should definitely do is that if you have a controller you should configure this. You can pair up DualSense or Xbox Series controllers quite easily and it'll automatically configure them so they can use them in your game. So here we're trying out Mega Man X and we're testing out the CRT shader once again which looks fantastic on the MacBook Air screen. However, if you want something a little bit more complex, we can try PS1 emulation too. Here we're trying out Tekken 3, which is definitely one of my favorite games. However, on OpenMU, there aren't that many graphical options. If you truly want to run PlayStation 1 games properly on the Mac, then you want to be using the emulated Duck Station, which allows this game to run at nine times native resolution. This also implements a bunch of graphical features, including widescreen support, as well as geometry correction, which makes this game look amazing, even running at 4K resolution at 60 fps. Next we're looking at PSP emulation using PPSSPP. So this is definitely one of the best emulators you can get on the Mac. Again it's easily able to run the majority of PSP games at nine times native resolution or equivalent to 4k at 60 frames per second. And this includes relatively demanding titles like God of War Ghosts of Sparta which manages to run without any kind of slowdowns at all and looking beautiful on the MacBook Air. And speaking of handheld gaming, we do have the successor project to Lime 3DS, which is a project now called Azahar. So you can go ahead and use this to emulate 3DS games. And here we're going to pump up the resolution to eight times native or equivalent to 4K once again. And even though 3DS is a touchscreen handheld, we can use our mouse cursor to emulate that touch layer and play these games pretty well. This is the game Pompompyrin Koro Koro Daibuken, running at 60 FPS at 4K. Here we're trying out the twin stick shooter called Nano Assault, which again runs beautifully at 4K on the MacBook Air. And this is great to see because the original project called Citra was abandoned due to all of the legal complications with Yuzu and also Ryujinx as well. So it's great to see that some people have continued developing this emulator. So next we're going to look at PlayStation 2 emulation using PC SX2. So there was a native Mac emulator called Ether SX2, but that was abandoned by its main developer. But PS2 emulation has continued 
continued with PCSX2. So even though this is an Intel binary being translated through Rosetta 2, it's still using a new metal renderer, which works fantastically. This is three times native resolution of Shadow of the Colossus running at basically 1080p without any kind of substantial hitching or stutter. I also tested out one of my other favorite games, Katamari Damacy, which is also running three times native. You can play this game on PS2, but there's also a native Mac version that just released on Apple Arcade as well. Next, we're looking at Xbox 360 emulation using Xenia. So this doesn't have a Mac port at the moment, but we can run it through Crossover with a no AVX patch version. I'll leave a link in the description for a tutorial on how to do this. So although it's actually possible to play these games, the performance is not fantastic. We are running it through a wine translation layer, as well as actually emulating the Xbox 360. So performance isn't perfect. This is Forza 2 running at 1x native. Here we're playing the classic third person cover shooter, Gears of War 2. So both of these games basically are targeting 30 FPS, but on the M4 Mac through this version of Xenia, we're only getting about 25 to 30, so it's not quite locked there, and performance is a little bit stuttery. However, what you could do is to choose to play something a little less demanding. So this is the bullet hell shooter called Dodon Patchy Resurrection. And basically, because it's a 2D game, you can basically run this at 60 FPS without any major issues. Next, we're looking at the next generation PlayStation 3 emulator. So here we're using the native version of RPCS3. So it's been optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. And here we're playing the game Demon's Souls, one of the most demanding games to play on PS3. So this game is running pretty much flawlessly. We've applied various patches from the RPCS3 wiki, as well as game patches to allow us to run at 60 FPS. Now, not every single PS3 game is gonna work as flawlessly as this does. High-end titles, for example, GTA 5 or running God of War 3 it's just not going to perform well even on the highest end max but it's cool to see that one of the most beloved ps3 games does work pretty well on the m4 macbook air and speaking of high-end PlayStation emulation, this is the PlayStation 4 emulator called Shad PS4. And here I am attempting to run the game Bloodborne. So this is another From Software game. Now frame rate on the MacBook Air M4 is still pretty rough. We're only getting 12 FPS in this outdoor area. So we are not getting playable frame rates, but it's looking a hell of a lot better than it did when I tested this a few months ago on the Mac Mini M4. Now Shad PS4 development is pretty much in progress, especially on Mac OS. If you try to run a game that's a little bit less demanding, so this is the PS4 version of the game Dead Cells, then this basically runs flawlessly at 60 frames per second. So PS4 emulation is definitely a possibility. Hopefully we're gonna get better optimizations for shared PS4 on Mac in the future. Next, we're looking at Dolphin, which is an emulator for GameCube and the Wii. So this is one of the more well-optimized emulators for the Mac. It has its own metal renderer, and we're gonna be running the games at three times native resolution, basically 1080p resolution. Here we're gonna be testing the Wii game Sonic Colors. So this was originally designed to run on the original hardware at 30 FPS, and it has a cap, but you can use action replay cheat codes to enable a 60 frames per second mode, which can easily hit on the M4 chip. Next up, we are testing out the fighting game Tatsunoko versus Capcom. So this is pretty much running flawlessly, three times native resolution at 1080p, 60 FPS. So I'm a big fan of the Dolphin emulator. This is really good for games which support the gamepad natively and performance is pretty much perfect for virtually all games. Next, we're gonna be looking at Wii U emulation. So this is a special version of the Simu emulator being created by Samo Z256. So what's special about this is that it has a native metal renderer, which is still in development. So if you wanna find out how to do this, then make sure to click the link in the video description. Here we are playing the Wii U version of Tekken Tag Tournament 2 at 1X native resolution, running pretty much flawlessly at 60 FPS. And of course, Wii U emulation isn't complete without this particular game, which I'm not gonna name because I don't wanna get copyright striked, but Nevertheless, it's one of the most popular games to emulate on the Wii U platform. So one of the big advantages of the Metal Renderer is the fact that we have asynchronous shader compilation. So there is less stuttering when the shaders are being compiled for the first time. And basically the M4 Mac is pretty good at running this game. So we can get basically 40 to 50 FPS and probably even more once all of the shaders have fully compiled. And you know what? This isn't too bad for a passively called fanless MacBook Air. Lastly, we're looking at Nintendo Switch emulation. So Ryujinx has basically been shut down as a project and even successor projects like Green Dev's build have been taken down by GitHub, but you can still download these. And even though development is frozen in time, basically you can still play the majority of Switch games on the Apple Silicon Mac to some degree. There's some really great titles that still work through Ryujinx. For example, Red Dead Redemption Switch version is working fantastically at 1x native resolution at about 50 
to 60 plus FPS. So Switch emulation was taken down rather abruptly, but it was actually relatively mature. So a lot of games worked on it. And even though it's not getting proper full maintenance, it still remains one of the best emulators on a Mac. Anyway, I hope you found this game emulation test on the M4 MacBook Air useful. If you have any suggestions for testing in the future, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.